Hello, this is Pastor Scott and welcome to the Daily Message. Today is Monday. It is June 14th. Uh, today's Bible verse is Ephesians 3.20. God is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine. Today, we have the best apocalypse sign ever. It's the best. I can't wait to tell you about it. Can't wait to tell you about this Bible verse. Uh, we got a lot to talk about. Links are down below. You can subscribe to this channel. You can donate. I uh, appreciate those. And you can also connect with us via email or Facebook. So love to hear from you and love uh, for you to be able to keep up with what's happening uh, at Holy Cross and in our wider community. So uh, first, though, we have today's joke. A pirate walks into a bar. It's a pirate joke. The pirate has a wooden leg, an eye patch, and a hook for a hand. Orders a beer. Bartender gives him a beer. Our turn is a little curious. Says, uh, so, hey, buddy, uh, welcome. Glad to have you. We, we're an inclusive joint. We, we welcome pirates. It's fantastic. Uh, do you mind if I ask how you got the wooden leg? And the pirate says, ah, it was a terrible sea battle. Uh, I stood facing 12 cannons, and they all shot at me, and all they hit was me leg. Turns, well, that's okay. That's pretty cool. Um, what about, uh, what about the eye patch? No, no, no. Nope, I got that wrong. What about the uh, the hook, right? All right? What about the hook? So the pirate says, "Ah, I was caught by the British Navy, and they tied me to the mast, and I had to gnaw my own arm off to get free." Oh, well, that's that's pretty amazing. What about uh, what about what about the eye patch? Twas lying on the beach after setting myself free, and I looked up into the sky, and a seagull pooped in me eye. And the bartender says. What? That's crazy. Nobody nobody loses an eye from, from a seagull doing that. And the pirate says, "'Twas the first day with me hook." So there you go. There's today's joke. Uh, today's sign is the apocalypse. So Sally sent me this one, but I had seen it anyway. Oh, yes. Yes, I had. So what happened is that uh, off the coast of Massachusetts, a guy... A human being, an actual person, a man, even better, was literally swallowed and spit out by a whale. That's right. Literally spit out, literally swallowed by a whale. They think it was a humpback whale. Not entirely sure. Uh, but it was witnessed by his friends. What happened is the guy is a uh, lobster fisherman who just sort of goes out in a little boat and dives down in the like snorkels down in the water or, or I think he had scuba gear on he scuba dives down and he grabs lobsters right and he just catches them with his hands or a spear or whatever and throws them in a sack and goes home and eats a bunch of lobsters which honestly sounds amazing I would love to do that and all of a sudden he just didn't know what happened just everything's dark and he's getting all jostled around and he's not sure what's up and uh, then all of a sudden he's getting jostled around some more and he's out in the air and he doesn't know what happens and his, his friends are over there, right? And they're like, no, dude, you, you just totally got spit out by a whale. Like, it happened. A humpback whale took the guy in, swallowed him, and spit him back out. I mean, it's just, I mean, I, I, I need to stop this segment. This needs to be the last segment because nothing will ever be more apocalypse than that. That is amazing. Everybody waits until I record videos outside to do their lawn care. It's beautiful out here. If you're not outside, go outside. It's fantastic. It's great. And there are people doing lawn care. Uh, today's sign that it is uh, not the apocalypse um, is I just want to say thanks to everybody for uh, the grace that you showed me and my family. Uh, regarding graduation, which was yesterday. My daughter successfully graduated high school. And, um, you know, it was, we found out 16 days in advance that it would be on a Sunday morning at 9 a.m., which prevented me from uh, being able to be at worship. But the, the bishop was gracious enough to come, and all of you were just fantastic about it. I just received so many notes of support and people saying, that's great. Happy for you. Glad that you can go to the graduation. There was nobody was upset about it or worried that I wasn't going to be there. It was just a whole lot of grace and love. So, you know, if we can uh, treat each other like that, then clearly it is not the apocalypse. 
But if people are getting spit out, uh, swallowed up and spit out by whales, then it must be the apocalypse. You're going to have to decide for yourself. Uh, what's happening around church? This Sunday, this Sunday, this coming Sunday, which will be June 20th, the drive-in moves to 10 a.m. That's important. Uh, so if you come at 11, you will have just missed it. Um, we'll still give you communion. You know, you can still give an offering, I suppose, but uh, you'd probably be disappointed. So if you're a drive-in person, and if you aren't a drive-in person, I hope you check it out, because we've only got a few more weeks of it. Um, might as well come see what it, what it is. Um, that'll be at 10. Uh, we're also having another healthy worship Zoom, which I did not write down, uh, but that is coming up. It's one, I think it's one night this week. I want to say Wednesday, but check the daily message email because that will, uh, it'll be in there. Um, and you can participate in that and find, and hear the results of the survey, right? That came out uh, a little while ago. We had like 90 people fill out the survey, which is fantastic. And, um, you know, and give your thoughts on what our return to worship will look like. Our return to worship, of course, is July 18th. Um, Pastor Morgan also starts July 18th, and we'll have some Zooms about her uh, her involvement and what, what, what we can expect. Might have to cancel the Thursday night one. Uh, there's supposed to be one this Thursday, June 17th. Might have to cancel that, but there are two, June 23rd and 24th during the day. Check those out. Um, yeah, so today's devotion, as I share with you, is Ephesians 320 and it says uh, God is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine now there's a lot in that verse so let me unpack a little bit God is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine so God is able to do immeasurably more right so when we when we pray I think, uh, you know, and, and prayer should not always be a laundry list of things that we want God to do for us, but a, a lot, it is very appropriate to ask God for things and, and healthy and helpful and good. And uh, when we do that, we tend to be like specific, you know, like, please do this. Um, well, this, this says that, that God can do immeasurably more than what we ask for. Um, and, and not just more than we can ask for. Uh, but more than all we can ask for. So like you could ask for everything and God can do more than that. And not only can God do more than you could ever ask for if you added up all the things you could ask for, God can do more than if you added up all the things you could imagine God doing. So there's a lot in that verse, but it's a really, really uh, powerful, I think, and potent description of just what God can do. I think, you know, and, I, and it jumped out at me because I think sometimes we um, we think too small. Um, and we also think too narrow in our prayers. And and I think it is it's, it might be helpful to consider, and, and, and I want to invite you to think bigger. Um, and not just think bigger, but be more open. Right, so think bigger in your prayers and and what God can do, and and be more open. Right, and maybe God is is thinking and doing things that we never thought of, that that we never imagined, but God can can do immeasurably more than all we can imagine. So, you know, expanding the possibilities of what could be. You know, my my tendency in prayer is to think about this thing right in front of me, and I, I know the answer, God. So I'm going to pray for this this specific thing. And then if you don't do that, then you stink. You know what I mean? Uh, but this kind of expands the possibilities and expands the horizons and of what is possible and what God might do. And so I just want to invite you to, uh, to consider that in your, in your prayer life, to, to expand the possibilities, right, of, of what God might be doing and what you might be asking God to do. So that's our invitation today. And so our prayer focus is for our prayers. We're going we're to pray about praying, which might seem weird, but um, why not, right? Why not ask God to help us to, to, to be completely open in our prayer time and to expand our, our minds and our thoughts about what could be. So it's a beautiful day for me. I'm just going to sit and be quiet, listen to the bird strip. The lawn care work has stopped, which is lovely, and all I hear are birds right now. So um, I invite you to just sit and be still. Breathe three times deeply. Listen to the birds.
God, help us in our prayer time. Help us as we come to you to come with open minds and open hearts full of possibilities for what you might intend and have in mind for us in our lives. I know that when I look back on my life, I see you doing things that I never would have imagined or expected, such as Michigan. Uh, but I am here and I am blessed because of it. And you have so many things in mind for all of us that we can't even imagine. But you, Lord, are capable of immeasurably more than we could ask or imagine. And so I pray that you would, we pray that you would open us all to the possibilities that you have in mind for us, our lives, our loved ones, and our world. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. It's a crazy world, but Jesus is still risen. The tomb is still empty. None of that has changed. So be smart, stay safe, love everybody, and I'll see you soon.